Hello and welcome to our latest fund manager video interview. Today I'm joined by Sue Nofke, manager of the Schroeder Income Growth Fund, which is an investment trust. Sue, thank you for your time today. Pleasure. As we head into 2021, are you optimistic that it's going to be a better year for income seeking investors? I think it is. If you look at Link Asset Services, who do uh, an incredibly detailed study across the UK equity market, they're looking at 6% growth for calendar 2021. And if I look at my portfolio and adjust it for the, the different um, period ends, then I would say I'm much more optimistic about the second half of 2021 in particular for, for income growth, because I think we'll be through a lot of the economic uncertainty. We should have a much clearer idea about vaccines and their effectiveness and how quickly they're deployed. And that should benefit confidence. So, yes, I, I am pretty optimistic that we will be through the worst by the end of 2021. And in terms of um, individual stocks, what are your top share picks for 2021 and why? Well, clearly, I like all 34 stocks in the portfolio. But if I had to highlight one stock or, or one area that, that I'm particularly keen on, I would say it's student uh, accommodation. Because some of these stocks have been very hard hit, I think um, wrongly, because their business models are not disrupted by either COVID or any other aspect. Students will still come to UK universities, be they international students or domestic students, to study. And they have shown that blended learning or online learning is no substitute for face-to-face for -face and the whole student experience. So their assets are, are well-placed and well-funded. And I think that um, as students will return to, to campuses in force and pay fully for their accommodation, we'll see the, the income generated and dividends paid really return to normal very quickly. Uh, and a number of these shares in Peric Student Property is, is one I would highlight. It's trading at a significant discount to its net asset value. And I think that's completely unwarranted. So that would be my top pick for next year. And in terms of um, other sectors and or potentially themes in the portfolio, um, what, which, which other themes do you think could potentially have a, a better year than in 2020, in 2021? It's a really interesting question and quite difficult to, to answer because I normally really am looking for individual stock stories. But when I had a look through the portfolio, there was one theme that, that stuck out. And that's infrastructure. And I can see that um, throughout aspects of, of the portfolio in terms of Anglo-American mining company, Balfour Beatty, a construction company that also has an investment portfolio of infrastructure assets. I can see it in 3i, which is a um, private equity company that has 20% of its portfolio in infrastructure assets. And um, Really, what, what excites me about infrastructure is that governments are likely to have to spend more fiscal spending rather than monetary stimulus to get economies moving again after COVID. And this is not just a UK phenomenon. This is a global phenomenon from North America, throughout Europe, and especially in Asia. And a number of these companies are particularly well placed to take advantage of that. If we think about Anglo-American, it provides all the, the minerals that, that are needed, um, not just for constructing buildings and motorways, but, but also around the energy transition for electric vehicles and electrification. So I'm pretty excited about that as a theme running through the portfolio in a number of holdings. In terms of your top 10 holdings, um, three particular shares stood out to me um, that focus heavily on the UK consumer, and that's Pets at Home, Unilever and Tesco. Is each of these firms well placed to emerge as winners from COVID-19? Um, I would argue that each of them is. So 
perhaps in different ways. And some of them have um, managed the crisis pretty well. And, and I would say they've had a good COVID crisis, particularly in the case of pets at home. So for people that, that don't know the, the pets at home story, they are an omni-channel retailer, but they have a very significant services business in their vet business, some of which are in-store vets, some of which are standalone vets. So we've seen an explosion really in the number of people owning pets. Um, if you've had a pet, then 50% of existing pet owners have got a second one during lockdown. So there, there's a bigger population of, of pets to buy things for. That's premium food. It's all the accessories. It's the flea treatments. So they have really um, delivered good like-for-like -like growth um, during this disrupted period. They were an essential retailer. The vet's business, I think, is misunderstood across the market. If we try and disaggregate the valuations, we can see that um, the vet services business is quite a misunderstood business within the UK um, market. The company is very much covered by retail specialists, not services business. So we can see potential for, for long-term growth from that. If I look at Tesco, um, you wouldn't know from its share price that it's had a good COVID, um, but I think operationally it has. So um, it has hired more staff. It's serviced us in terms of, of providing the nation to make sure that no one went hungry. And it sold its Asian business for a good price and is looking forward to returning that capital to shareholders, having bolstered its pension fund deficit and repaired the balance sheet in the last few years. It's in a good position to reward shareholders going forward. So I think that one really is a store of value for the future, having really demonstrated its credentials in the marketplace. And Unilever is very much um, an emerging markets um, company. And I think a lot of those businesses ha have felt constrained by COVID. So I would see a resolution to the crisis uh, as really providing a pathway to some of the areas of, of that business that, that have been kept under pressure. So all the impulse buys of ice creams and um, ready to go drinks, for example, should bubble up compared to the pantry loading of your laundry um, materials uh, and your staple products. Sue, so, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you, Carl.